Welcome to the SPSS tutorial on casewise diagnostics and assumptions in regression. In this video, we'll cover outlier diagnostics, how to print these statistics, how to save our regression residuals, and how to graph using histograms and scatter plots based on these residuals, as well as how to output statistics from multicollinearity. In today's video, we'll be using the altruism dataset that we've used in other videos. We'll be looking at predicting altruism based on two continuous variables, socioeconomic status and neuroticism. I could have chosen most any variables. The regression model itself will not be important in this particular video. Instead, we'll simply be showing how to output outlier diagnostics, multicollinearity, and residual plots. So we'll go to analyze, regression, and linear, because these are all based on regression diagnostics. We'll use our dependent variable as altruism. We'll input two predictor variables. And so far, this is just like a two predictor regression model. And in fact, it is. What we'll be digging into further, though, are the options and the statistics that we can include. The first we'll look at are the statistics. We'll want to include our collinearity diagnostics to find out whether we have multicollinearity as a problematic issue in this particular model. In addition, we'll ask for our residuals output, looking for outliers, and instead of selecting only some outliers, we'll include all cases. This will include reports of outlier diagnostics for every case in our study. Let's continue. Next, let's include plots. You can see here that you have the option to examine several different types of plots based on the dependent variable, on z-scores of the dependent variable, on residual scores and other types of scores. In this case, let's ask it to produce all partial plots. We'll also ask for a histogram and a normal probability plot, which is also called a QQ plot. We'll continue. In the save function, we have a number of different values that we can ask it to save. In this case, we want the computer to save unstandardized residuals. This way, the residuals from our regression analysis will be saved in a new data in our data file. We could, of course, include other statistics such as influence statistics or distances, but in this case, we'll only save residual scores. And we'll continue. Now we're ready for our analysis, and we'll click OK. What you'll see as I scroll down is that we first get our typical regression output, including our variables entered. We have a two predictor regression with neuroticism and SES. We have our typical model summary and our F test for the overall model, which is significant. We then get our coefficients table, which tells us that SES is not a significant predictor of altruism in this model, but neuroticism is a significant predictor. In this table now, we also get our tolerance and variance inflation factor statistics under this collinearity statistics component. Next, after the collinearity diagnostic dimensions, we get case-wise diagnostics or outlier diagnostics for every case in our study. Now, as I scroll down, you'll notice that we have a lot of individuals in our study, so we get these statistics one for each person. The numbers on the left column represent each person in our study, and you can see that we have 100 people. We can include all the way down to 150 people by double-clicking on these blue arrows. I won't do that for the current analysis because it simply takes up more space. We do, however, get descriptive statistics for our residuals, including our mean residuals and standard deviations, for our overall sample. Below this, we see our first charts. Here we see a histogram where the frequency is plotted against the standardized residual. Now in regression, the residual should be normally distributed, and we've overlaid, or the computer has overlain, a normal distribution, and we can see that ours fits quite well. Down below, we see our first QQ plot, and for strong QQ plot, we want to see these dots, which represent each case, fitting well against this regression line. Again, it looks good in this sample. Down below, the first partial regression plot that's output in the data is our dependent variable against 
our first independent variable of socioeconomic status. Down below, we also see the second variable, altruism, plotted against neuroticism. So it gives us each predictor plotted against the dependent variable when we ask for all partial plots. In this case, just like in typical graphing, we can open up these files by double clicking, I won't do it here, and choosing amongst a number of options, including to overlay a line of best fit. We could change other types of options within this, such as the coloring or the shading. We can identify individual cases, all of which are covered in the graphing video for SPSS.